So the situation is we have a pile of chain. So this pile of chain we're given that it's frictionless. So the chain is completely smooth. And it has a length of L and it has an average uniform density of sigma kilos per meter. So the situation is we let the chain go. So starting from rest, uh, we let the chain fall. So this part becomes unwound. This part stays tangled up. And we're going to hold on to this point here. So we hold on to the chain. So the problem is how much force do we exert on this point? What is the force? And we want to find the force as a function of time. So how do we do it? So first let, let us find the momentum of this, of this entire system as a function of time. So the momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So what is the momentum of this entire system? So you see that this system is composed of two parts. This uh, exposed part that has already been stopped and this part that's still falling. So this part has, the exposed part has zero momentum, but the falling part still has momentum. So we need to find the momentum of the falling part, which is going to be the momentum of the entire system. So what is the mass of the falling part? Well, let us just uh, uh, suppose that the exposed part has a length of x. So the mass of the falling part is equal to L minus x times its density. So L minus x is the length of the tangled up, the wound up part of the chain, and times its uh, density, we get the mass. So this is the mass of the curled up part of the chain. Well, velocity, what is velocity equal to? Since we assume that the chain is frictionless, it's essentially going, undergoing freefall. So velocity is equal to acceleration times time, so gt. And also we can notice that we can interpret x as the distance that the wound up part has fallen. So we essentially we can just use our equations of motion, gt squared. And since uh, the, the entire motion started uh, at rest, the, our initial velocity was 0. So we get x is equal to 1 half gt squared. So we can just substitute this right in, sigma gt. And so we just uh, multiply this right in. T cube. So what do we do next? So next we take the derivative of momentum with respect to time. And why do we do that? We do that because uh, the derivative of momentum with respect to time is equal to force. So the change of momentum is equal to force. And notice that from uh, the equations here, I've assumed that the downward, uh, downward direction is positive. So what is the net force upon this entire system? So what downward forces do we have? So obviously we have gravity, right? Which is mg. And m is obviously the mass of the entire chain, which is equal to the density times its length. And then we also have upward force from our hand. And this is exactly the function that we're looking for. And so there we have it. Right. Once we solve this equation, we would have found the function that we were looking for. So let me just open a new page. So let me just copy down what we had. So the downward force of gravity minus the force from our hand is equal to our change in momentum. So this part we had negative one half sigma g g square three t square. So obviously these cancel out and these negative signs turn to positive and there we have it. A force as a function of time is equal to three over two sigma g square t square. And there we have it. This is the function that we're looking for. And so notice that an interesting thing. So as the chain unwinds so how long does it take to unwind? The entire chain is L meters long. So let's, let us use this equation again. So the entire thing is L meters long. So how much time does it take to unwind? So this term here is zero. So the time it takes for the entire chain to unwind is equal to 2L divided by G and the square root. So what is the, so this is the time, uh, the exact time where the chain unwinds. So what is the force at that very moment? So the force at that very moment is equal to, according to the formula that we just found, you could do this. And then the, uh, the g's cancel out, the 2's cancel out. So we get 3, 
sigma lg. And notice that sigma l is actually the mass of the entire chain, so we get 3mg. So as the chain keeps unwinding, so as the chain keeps unwinding, the moment that it uh, completely stretches uh, out, uh, the force that we exert on the chain is equal to 3mg. But once it stops, notice that the only uh, force that we need to keep the chain still is just mg, because once it, once it has stopped unwinding, it's just a still chain. So it's just a matter of holding this chain, keeping, uh, keeping the chain up. So uh, the very moment that the chain unwinds, the force that our hand experiences is 3mg. But right after that, it's going to uh, immediately turn to mg. So this is an interesting thing that you might observe. So uh, that is all for this question. I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.